Hey there, how's it going? And welcome back to another RC Garage update. As you can see, the frog is done. So let's turn the camera around and have a look. The Mighty Frog is finished. I've just come back from a shakedown run. Very, very pleased with how it performed. The, the frog is such a blast to drive. Uh, I know some people don't like the way it looks, but uh, for me, it's just classic, iconic Tamiya. This was my first RC car back in the day, so I have a lot of love for this buggy. Um, such an enjoyable buggy to build and drive. Um, shakedown one went okay, no real issues. I did lose a screw. I didn't put enough, I don't think I put enough thread lock on, but uh, aside from that, it ran flawlessly. Um, my upgraded suspension. Now, I haven't driven the original Frog for a long time, and my other one has no electronics in, so I couldn't do a back to back comparison, but I would say it was marginally better than stock. I think. My issue is the springs are still a bit too strong for this chassis and so I need to get some softer springs to kind of soften up the suspension. But it's never going to be great. I mean most of the suspension is being, most of, the, most of it is being done by the tyres compressing. But it ran pretty well. And the body is Tamiya PS, I think it's 15 or 16, brilliant blue. This is the same blue that I used for my Kyosho Beetle. I just really loved the color scheme, so I ended up painting the wheels um, chrome yellow to match uh, the Beetle. Uh, the decals are a complete mix. Um, we've got some VQS on here, we've got some hotshot decals, some wild one off-roader. In fact, when it came to the decals, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do and I ended up just going with like a red and white color scheme with the blue base. So at some point I may try some white wheels on here and see how I like it. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, the light buckets, uh, I originally was going to paint them, but then I remembered in the Blockhead Motors edition, Wild One, you get some chrome light buckets. Now I didn't use them on my build because I went with the um, LED light buckets. So when I was digging these out, I noticed there was also chrome uh, wheel adapters, wheel hubs. And so I thought, oh, I'll fit them because once they're fitted, they kind of look like um, disc brakes in a way. And I thought, oh, that looks good. Uh, one added benefit, unexpected benefit, is these are actually slightly wider, about millimeter, well, one to two millimeters wider than the standard stock black plastic ones you get in a frog kit. So the result is the rear has got a um, noticeably wider track now. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to keep it stable. Uh, certainly I didn't roll it during the shakedown run, but I was kind of running it quite light, so um, I can't comment on if it made a huge difference or not. Um, the torque tune motor, oh sorry, the dirt tune motor is very nice. Um, it's not fast. Um, it's slightly, I want to say it's slightly better than the standard silver can. Um, I would like, I would like a little bit more speed, but at the moment I'm quite happy with how it's going. Uh, no other issues. Now, a couple of other mods I did since you last saw. If you look into the driver's cockpit, you will see I've kind of built some kind of um, driver's cockpit area. Um, I noticed on the original frog. I'm not sure you're going to be see, you have to see this because of all the reflections, but if you paint the body how you're supposed to and keep this clear, you can see into the chassis, you can see the electronics, the battery, you can see the, the driver figure, and I just didn't really like the way it looked. And so, if you remember from the previous RC Garage update, I had built a little mounting plate underneath here for the receiver to go on. So there's like a little space here where you could mount a plate and, and that's what I did. Well, the plastic that I bought for that, I had quite a bit left over, just this thin plastic board. And what I did was I just cut a couple of pieces out and then um, double-sided taped them to the top of the chassis here. And again, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick this up, but there and built kind of a little dashboard cockpit um, just to kind of hide the electronics and the chassis. Uh, originally, I tried to mount a steering wheel in there, but it's too close to the driver and it, it looked like it was coming out of his elbow. So I just I just put a couple of um, decals in there instead. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out because it kind of hides a lot of the interior of the chassis and also 
prevents light getting in, so it makes it more difficult to see the electronics underneath. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that, how that turned out. Um, somebody asked me about this before on my uh, sand scorcher, the, the little flags that I've got. Basically, it's just vinyl, electrical vinyl tape. I just wrap it around, cut it to shape, and then stick on a couple of decals and call it call it a job done. Um, Speaking of sand scorcher, I've actually just finished doing some repairs to the sand scorcher. I broke the rear muffler tailpipe twice. Uh, not by crashing or rolling over, just by carrying it. Um, when I'm going to the park and shooting videos, I'm invariably carrying multiple buggies, plus camera equipment, uh, transmitter, batteries, etc. And with this, because of the chassis design, most of the weight is towards the rear. I tend to hold it at the back, and I guess my arm kind of rubbed against the muffler and just broke it off. Uh, so I fixed it once, re glued it back, and then it broke off again. So the sand scorch at the back, if you don't know, this, this plastic tailpipe section is actually three pieces, two pieces sandwiched together and you glue them together and the third piece, this um, tailpipe piece, mounts on top um, with just basically a small pin and some glue and it's very really easy to break off. And so I fixed it once and it broke off again and I was like, wow, this is really annoying. So I, I, I looked around on the net and I came across a, a Japanese blog and in hit in it he kind of suggested this solution so as you can see now it's all been repaired uh, not sure can we can pick that up that is a spring so what you do is you go to the hardware store and pick up a, a spring like this and this one the specs on it the wire diameter is uh, 0.65 millimeters um, the actual diameter of the spring is eight millimeters and the length is 30 millimeters and you basically get the spring and you just cut off the ends and then push it down over the lower piece and then insert the top piece and push that down as well paint it all up and when it's done it looks like that um so hopefully this is not going to break anymore um is that the actual the guy who wrote the blog, he must have misplaced or lost the actual original plastic piece and so he suggested using, over here you can pick up these pencil caps um, to go on pencils and they basically look like this and it's almost a perfect match so you can just, well, if it's too long you can cut it down if you want uh, the only downside is um, they've got like a little cut here to adjust the different size pencils but uh, I don't think it would be too noticeable depending on what angle you put it at but yeah um, so that's all now fixed so I plan to take this out um, sand scorcher is just such a blast to drive it, it, it handles poorly but I don't know there's something about it I just find really appealing well, that's all for this RC Garage update. My name is David. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.